In this video, we'll be looking at how to create logic circuits, complete truth tables, and write logical expressions. So let's start this video with a recap of the basic Boolean operators and their associated logic gates and truth tables. The simplest of the NOT gate. It simply reverses the input to the gate. Noughts become ones and ones becomes noughts. Next, we have the AND gate. For an AND gate output to be true, both the inputs have to be true, otherwise the output is false. Next comes the OR gate. With an OR gate, at least one of the inputs needs to be true, and as long as it is, the output is true. This differs slightly from an XOR gate, where we only have to have one of the inputs true, but not the other for the output to be true. We then have a NAND gate. You can think of this as an AND gate followed by a NOT gate. So it reverses the output of the typical AND gate. And in a similar way, the NOR gate is like an OR gate followed by a NOT gate. It effectively reverses the output of an OR gate. Now we went through all these in more detail in the previous video. The Cambridge ITCC syllabus states that candidates should be able to create logic circuits, complete truth tables, and write logic expressions from a problem statement, logic expression, truth table, or logic circuit, and vice versa. Effectively, logic expressions, truth tables, and logic circuits are all alternative ways of representing the same thing. So you should make sure for the exams that you're comfortable with at least one of these three, and then you're able to reproduce the other two from it. Let's have a go at completing the truth table for this logic circuit. The first thing we need to do is create columns for each of the inputs. So that's A, B and C. We then need to list all the possible combinations. Now, the easiest way to do this is to count up in binary from naught, naught, naught in the first row through to one, one, one in the last row. In other words, the binary numbers naught to seven. You then need a blank column for any interim outputs or inputs and the final output. So we have output D, which is the result of A or B, which becomes an input for the final AND gate. And then finally, we have the output E. We now take each row in turn, working through the logic gates in order. So let's start with the OR gate on the left. We consider the first two rows. A is zero and B is zero. Well, both these rows would result in D being zero. Remember with an OR gate, at least one of the inputs needs to be one for the output to be one. In the next rows, A is zero and B is one. Well, both those rows would result in D being one. In the next two rows, A is one and B is zero. Well, both these rows would result in D being one. And in the final two rows, A is one and B is one. So these would also result in D being one. We're finished with the OR gate, so we can move on to the AND gate. Now this gate has two inputs, C and D, which we've just worked out. If we consider the first row, C is zero and D is zero, and this means the output E will also be zero. Remember, both inputs to an AND gate must be one for the output to be one. The next row is a one and a zero. So E will be zero. We then have a zero and a one. So E is zero. We have a one and a one. So this time E is now one. A zero and a one makes a zero. A one and a one makes a one. A zero and a one makes a zero. And finally, a one and a one makes a one. So let's try constructing a logic expression this time from a logic circuit. So the final output of this diagram is D. 
So we start the expression with D equals. Now there are two gates feeding into that last OR gate. The first at the top there is an AND gate with the inputs A and B. So the AND gate can be represented as A and B. And notice how I've popped that in brackets just to make the expression easier to read. The output from this AND gate is combined with the output from the NOT gate to become the two inputs for the final OR gate. Therefore, directly after the A and B, we need an OR. We now have D equals A and B OR. And all that's left now is to represent the other input to the OR gate, which is NOT C. So the final logic expression is D equals A and B OR NOT C. OK, so time for you to have a go yourself. So try this example. Pause the video and write out the logic expression for this logic circuit and then check your answer. OK, let's see how you did. So we've started off with D equals. And then we're working backwards. So we've got D equals not. So not what? Well, we've got D equals not C and, and there's something else going to go in there because there's another gate feeding into that first input. And that first input there to the AND gate is A or B. So we've got D equals not C and A or B. Now you might have thought to yourself, couldn't I write this another way? Uh, could I just write not A or B and C? And you absolutely could. These two expressions mean exactly the same thing. OK, let's try one final example. So once again, pause the video and write out the logic expression for this logic circuit and then check your answer. OK, so how did you do? Um, either of the following two logic expressions shown on the screen are correct. Again, it all depends with which gate you start with, but they effectively mean the same thing. OK, so in this final example, we're going to tie everything we've learned so far together. We've got a scenario on the screen, which we're going to carefully read through, and then I'm going to pause the video and try to draw the logic circuit, construct the truth table and write the logic expression. So the scenario is a fire alarm goes off if either the temperature inside the building rises above 60 degrees Celsius or someone manually activates a fire alarm. A firefighter should be able to manually shut the alarm off regardless of how the alarm was triggered. So pause the video and see how far you can get with drawing the logic circuit, truth table and logic expression. OK, so how did you do? Here's the correct logic circuit. Let's work through the scenario to check it's correct. So we should try various inputs and work through the logic. Let's start with all the inputs as zero or false. In other words, the temperature is below 60 degrees, the fire alarm has not been set off, and a firefighter has not shut the alarm off manually. Now remember from our scenario that if the temperature rises above 60 degrees Celsius, the fire alarm should go off. And we can see indeed that if we set the temperature input to 1 or true, then both inputs to the final AND gate are 1 or true. And therefore, the final output is one or true, meaning our fire alarm goes off. In a similar way, if the alarm is set off manually, then it should go off. And this results in the same situation as before. Once again, the final AND gate output is one or true, signifying the alarm has gone off in this scenario. 
We also need to check if the alarm still goes off if both the temperature rises above 60 degrees and the alarm is activated manually. And of course, this still works as we're using an OR gate at this stage. And that only requires at least one of the inputs to be true for the outputs to be true. Now, if we'd used an XOR on exclusive OR gate at this point, the fire alarm wouldn't go off in this situation. So this is why we need to use an OR gate here. We also need to check following our scenario that regardless of the inputs to the OR gate, the fire alarm can be manually shut off by a firefighter. And we can see this works too. If we set the input of the NOT gate to one or true, its output becomes zero or false. This now results in the final AND gate outputting zero, or in our case, switching off the alarm. So now let's turn our logic circuit into a truth table and a logic expression. We start by creating a column for each input, in this case, A, B, and C. You then need a blank column for any interim outputs or inputs and the final output. So we need a column for A or B, which we're gonna call E. We also need a column for the output of not C which we're calling F. And then finally, we've got D at the end there. And of course, you can substitute any letters you like for the various inputs or outputs. We then need to list all the possible combinations for the three initial inputs of A, B, and C. And as we've said before, the easiest way to do this is to count up in binary from zero to seven. That makes sure you cover all the possible combinations. Next, we complete the part of the truth table that represents the OR gate. So this is the inputs A and B and the output column E. Remember, if either A or B is one, then the output in E is one. So we've filled that out on the screen there. Next, we complete the part of the truth table that represents the NOT gate. This is dead easy. Remember, if C is zero, then F is one and vice versa. So we've filled column F out for you. And finally, we complete the truth table, which represents the AND gate. Remember that both the inputs to the AND gate, which are columns E and F, which we've just worked out, must be one for D to be one. And finally, here is the logic expression for the truth table. Note that either the expression is shown are correct. It just depends whether you choose to start with the OR gate or the NOT gate.